So unless you've been hiding under a rock, you've had to have heard of Sony's announcement of the Sony Alpha 9 Mark III. And the reason that this camera created such a buzz in the photography industry is because of the inclusion of this feature called a global shutter. Now this isn't the first camera to ever have global shutter. They've been offered in some high-end cinema cameras, but this is the first time it's been included in a full-frame mirrorless camera. And this camera, it, yeah, it is a little bit more of a flagship camera. It's a $6,500 camera body, so you're probably thinking, Jacob, why are you even telling us about this? Well, the reason why is Sony's really good about rolling technology down from their flagship cameras to their more prosumer and consumer cameras. And so that's why I find it still pretty exciting. Now, when I first heard about Global Shutter, I have heard about it previously, but I didn't really know that much about it. And so I kind of went down the rabbit hole a little bit and I wanted to find out, you know, what really are the benefits of a Global Shutter and are there any downsides? Well, I really found four reasons that a global shutter is really awesome. And I found one to two reasons that maybe there is a little bit of a downside. So in this video, that's what I want to get into. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, before we talk about a global shutter, let's just do a little bit review of how a conventional camera uh, with a, a mechanical shutter operates because I think understanding this will put us in a position to be able to understand better of why a global shutter has various benefits. So a conventional mirrorless camera uses a mechanical shutter. Now think of a mechanical shutter a lot like roller blinds on a window, right? You can roll the blinds up, light comes in the window, you bring the blinds down, light doesn't come in the window. The sensor on a conventional camera has something known as your sensor readout time. And the reason for this is the sensor tends to read sequentially or progressively. So basically when your sensor is exposed to light, the sensor starts gathering information from that sensor slowly line by line across the sensor and then it shoots it over to the processor and so this creates what we call sensor readout time now let's look at a global shutter well a global shutter has an electronic sensor that reads out simultaneously so it essentially has a readout speed of zero milliseconds and that puts it in a position to not need a mechanical shutter. So we can take that mechanical shutter and chuck it out the window. And why is that a big deal? Well, that's the first big reason that I think a global shutter is awesome. So take this camera right here, which is the Sony Alpha 7 R4. And that shutter in this camera is rated for 500,000 actuations. So basically it's known that it's going to fail at some point, right? Because it's a mechanical mechanism that's opening and closing. The camera that I'm shooting on right now, the Alpha 7 IV, I think is rated for 150,000 actuations. So by eliminating the mechanical shutter, we're getting rid of probably the biggest reason that your camera might fail. So that's huge. Now the next big reason is for those of us who shoot with flash photography or strobes or speed lights. And that is with a conventional mirrorless camera, you have a native sync speed that's relatively slow. This camera here is 1 250th of a second. I think some Canon cameras are 160th of a second. There are ways to get around this by using something known as high speed sync, but there's some downsides to using high speed sync. For instance, let's say I'm using a 600 watt strobe and while I'm shooting at a native sync speed, I'm getting that 600 watts from that strobe. But once I switch into high speed sync, I'm getting maybe half or less of that output. And that's because it's essentially pulsing the light during the exposure multiple times and it absorbs a lot of the power output. So that's huge because with a global shutter camera like the Alpha 9 Mark III, it can natively sync to 1 thousandths of a second. That's crazy, right? And you're like, well, why is that such a big deal? Well, the reason why is say I'm doing a beach photo shoot and I'm shooting on a 50 millimeter f1.2 lens and creatively I want to shoot at that wide aperture and it's kind of a bright sunny day. Well, I'm at my base ISO of 100 and I'm like, how do I cut out the rest of the ambient light that I don't want? Well, I basically have two choices. One is I use a faster shutter speed to cut that ambient light out 
or I use something like a neutral density filter. And both of those can potentially have some downsides. Well, the beautiful thing is with that global shutter is I can go to maybe one four thousandths of a second, still stay in that native sync speed, so I can optimize the power output from my strobe. But at the same time, I'm able to reduce the ambient light without any other, you know, workarounds. So that's huge. Now, the next big reason that a global shutter is awesome is because it can eliminate banding. So you're probably thinking, well, what's banding? You know, I don't really know what that is. Well, banding is something that tends to be a little bit more of an issue when you're shooting indoors. So certain types of LED lighting or fluorescent lighting essentially pulsates the light at a high frequency. And depending on that frequency of that pulsating, it can come in and out during your same exposure on your camera and cause you to have bands of different amounts of light in your image. So that can be really terrible if you're working in those types of maybe sports photography with that indoor lighting and you're like, ah, it can be kind of difficult to deal with. Well, when you go to the global shutter, since it's simultaneously exposing the entire sensor, it eliminates banding. Probably one of the biggest upsides of a global shutter, especially for those of us who shoot video, is the elimination of rolling shutter. Now you're like, well, what's rolling shutter? Well, rolling shutter is a problem because it causes items that should be straight, say maybe a telephone pole and you're panning your camera to look bent or warped or maybe fan blades to look distorted. And it can really plague those of us who are cinematographers. So this gets eliminated by having the global shutter because here again, it simultaneously instantly reads out from the sensor and you don't have that delay. These are all great upsides, right, to having a global shutter. So what are some of the downsides? Well, I found really two potential downsides. Historically, there's been some limitations on the dynamic range. And with this camera, the Sony Alpha 9 Mark III, I think there might be some limitations on the dynamic range as well. And that's because the base ISO is higher than other Sony cameras, as well as the extended ISO range is lower. So those kind of clue me into probably there being a little bit less dynamic range. But here again, I don't think Sony would release this feature into one of their flagship cameras if they didn't have a pretty good grasp on its dynamic range. So I think it's still probably very good, but it's probably not gonna be as awesome as some of their other cameras. Now, what is another downside? Well, you might notice that they included this feature on a 24 megapixel camera. And I think that there's still some more problems to solve to uh, use this feature on some of their higher end cameras that are higher megapixel because it's so much information and data that they have to simultaneously pull from the sensor and have a processor that's able to process it really, really fast. I'm really excited with this feature and this rollout. And I think it's only going to get better. This is their first iteration. I think they're going to continue to improve the dynamic range. And I think they're going to continue to solve maybe some of these other little bit downsides. But overall, I think there's tons of really awesome upsides to having a global shutter. And I'm really excited that they're going to roll this out to more cameras that you and I are likely to own. While this might not be a feature that we get to use yet, I'm hopeful that we'll get to use it soon. So anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Alrighty, take care.